Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about graphs and how graphs can be used to represent equations or functions. Now I always like to explain stuff with examples. I think it's easier for you to understand if there's an example involved. So today's example that we're going to use to talk about graphs is Danielle's dogs. Danielle has a dog walking service and she's walking dogs every day for a bunch of people in her town and they pay her five dollars per hour per dog. Now I could make a function or an equation out of that. I've got five dollars, I've got hours, and I need to know the total amount I'm going to earn. So it would be the total amount earned equals five times the number of hours you worked, or y equals 5x. So again, to create this equation, I need some variables, and we're going to call y the amount of money earned, we're going to call x the number of hours worked, and the function would be y equals 5x. The amount of money you earned which is y, equals five dollars times the number of hours you worked. Well, if I had that function, I could create a table to kind of define how much money I made for different number of hours worked. For instance, I could list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten under hours worked as examples of the number of hours I might work. And hours worked is x, and that's our input value. So we're going to input those hours into the equation and figure out what y value we get for each. For instance, if I input 1 into the equation for x, then I've got y equals 5 times 1, or five dollars. If I work one hour, I'm going to have five dollars worth of revenue. If I work two hours, I input two in for x, and I've got y equals five times two, or ten dollars. And I could do that for all the other numbers on this table, and that would help me because I could look at the table and say if I worked seven hours, I'm going to make thirty-five dollars. Well, I could also graph this table. I could graph the information in this table and list as my x-axis the hours worked, 1 through 10, and as my y-axis I could list the amount of revenue I earned, $5 to $50. And if I did that, it looked just like that. For each value of x, like 1, I'd go up to the line and then I could take it over to the y-axis and find out how much money I earned. For one hour, I earned five dollars. For six hours, I earned thirty dollars. Six hours, thirty dollars. Now there's something interesting about this. This is a straight line. And that means there's a constant rate of change. For every increase of 1 in x, there's an increase of 5 in y. If I go from 2 to 3 on x, I go from 10 to 15 on y. There's a constant rate of change, and it's that number that we're multiplying times x. So y increases at a constant rate of change. And we could label each of the points on this graph. For instance, that first point is 1, 5. At one hour worked, I make $5. The 1 is the x value. The 5 is the y value. And at four hours, I make $20. The x value is 4. The y value is 20. And the point is where 4 and 20 would cross. 
and I could do that for 8 and 40. If I worked 8 hours, I'd make $40. And that 8 and 40 is the same numbers I had in the table. Well, Danielle decided early on that she'd keep pretty good records about how much money she was making. She thought that might be helpful. So, she created a table, and in the left-hand column, she put the weeks, 1 through 16. And then in the next column, she recorded the number of hours she worked that particular week. And then in the third column, she totaled up how much revenue she had that week. So, in the first week, she worked three hours and she earned $15, which is $5 per hour times the three hours she worked. And if we go down here to the six week, she worked six hours, and she had $30 revenue, which is six hours times $5 per hour. And she also thought it'd be helpful if she kept track of how much money she made each month. So in each, uh, for each uh, of the weeks in January, she totaled it up, and for January, she had $90 in revenue. And in February, she had 120, and so forth. Well, then she thought, it'd probably be helpful if I graph this information. And the first thing I'm going to do is graph the number of hours worked and the total revenue that I earned. And when she did that, the graph looked like this. She, when she worked three hours, she made $15. So she went over to three hours and went up to the 15 and put a dot there. And then when she worked five hours the second week, she earned $25. So she went out to five, went up to 25, and put a dot there. Next week, she worked four hours and earned $20. So she went out to four and up to 20 and put a dot there. And when she put all the dots in and connected them with a line, it was a straight line. Should that have surprised her? No, this is just another function exactly like the one on the previous slide. This is y equals 5x. Because for every x value, to come up with the y value, we just multiply x by 5. So it's the same as that graph in the previous chart. Next, she thought she'd graph how much money she was making by the month. So she put the months along the x-axis, and the dollars earned along the y-axis. And for January, she went in and put a dot at 90. For February, she went up and put a dot at 120. And 180 for March, and 270 for April. And then she connected those dots, and she discovered it wasn't a straight line. It was a curved line. But it was a pretty predictable fashion. It, was a, it grew in a predictable fashion. It just wasn't a constant rate of change. It was an increasing rate of change. Well, then she thought she'd graph her revenue by the week. She has weeks 1 through 16, and then she's got revenue $15 up to $70. And when she did that, she plotted all those points on the graph, and it wasn't a line, and it wasn't any kind of a constant rate of change, or even an accelerating rate of change. She couldn't easily fit a line between all these points. It had gone over the place. It had been a crazy line. But there was a certain pattern here. As the uh, weeks went by, she was making more money, which is what you can see here. As the business got more established, she made more money. But it wasn't a constant or a dependable uh, change in Y for, for changes in the week. Now these are three examples of three different kinds of graphs and three different kinds of, uh, of relationships. The first one is a linear function. There's a constant rate of change between X and Y. The second one is a nonlinear function. There's a predictable pattern here, but it's not a straight line. And the third one is not a function at all. It's a relationship, but it's not a function. Well, now we're looking at a graph with two lines on it. What can we tell about these two equations that uh, these lines represent? Well, first of all, they're both linear equations. They're both straight lines, aren't they? But they're different straight lines. 
they both are, rev- are, are, are showing us a relationship between revenue and hours worked, but they're a different relationship. And the obvious difference is that this line is much steeper than this line. So Y increases faster with changes in X for the top line than it does for the bottom line. Now what we've graphed here is two different dog walking services. We've got Danielle's dogs and she makes five dollars per hour and we graph that with the lighter color line. And then we've graphed David's dogs and he only gets three dollars an hour and he's in the darker colored line. And you can see that for one hour's increase for David we get an increase in revenue of three dollars. If there were a two-hour increase for David, we'd have two times that $3 per hour or a $6 increase in revenue. And for Danielle, her constant rate of change is five. So for each hour's increase, her revenue goes up by $5. Well, we're asked to graph the function y equals 2x plus 3. And then we're asked is this, if, whether this is a linear function. Now, well, the first thing we need to do is to create a table of x values and y values. And we have to remember that the x values are input value. We're going to just input some values into the equation for x, and the equation is going to spit out a y value. Well, let's put in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for x. And then we input those x values into the equation, and we get a corresponding y value. When we put 1 into the equation, we've got 2 times 1, or 2, plus 3. We end up with a y value of 5. And we do that for all the x values and come up with a series of y values. And then we can graph that. When we graph it, it looks just like that. When x is 1, y is 5, 1 and 5. When x is 4, y is about 12 or 11. When x is 6, y is 15. Now what kind of graph is that? What kind of function is this? This this equation is represented by this line, and what kind of uh, line is that? Well, it's a straight line. It's a linear uh, function, and this is a linear relationship. Well, I'm going to be really disappointed if you got this one wrong. It's real easy to tell from a graph whether the function is a linear function. If it's a linear function, the function is going to graph as a straight line. And this is definitely not a straight line. So this graph is not The blue line is steeper than the red line. Describe what that means in terms of the functions. Well, when I look at those, I can see they're both linear functions. They're both, they both have a constant rate of change. But the blue line is a steeper line, which means that it has a greater rate of change than the red line does. So what I can tell is the blue line has a greater rate of change which means that an increase in x of 1 results in a greater increase in the output value y for the for the function described by the blue line. Well that's our lesson on graphs and how they can be used to describe functions. 
Now it's time to test your knowledge. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on graphs. After you've done the worksheet, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on graphs. I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon.